welcome to this week's preview show where Neil Perrett is alongside me for the next 15 minutes or so. Here's what's coming up. We'll be looking back at that defeat to Burnley at Turf Moor. We'll also discuss the under-21s and their progress in the Premier League Cup. And finally, we will look ahead to tomorrow's big game here at Vitality Stadium against Chelsea. Well, let's start back at last weekend and that game against Burnley. Neil, before we get on to all the VAR and all the controversy there, the performance for large parts of the game was, was pleasing. Well, particularly in the first half, created a number of chances, obviously scored a goal which wasn't. Um, yes, yeah, so there was certainly some really good, positive, encouraging signs. And right from the start as well, I think Callum Wilson had a chance within the first 30 seconds. Joshua King slid in again about half an hour later, almost breaking the deadlock. And, you know, the chances were there. Yeah, I mean, it's a cliche, but on another day, you know, it could have been very different had one of those gone in. You know, had the um, Harry Wilson goal been allowed to stand as well, it could have been a, a completely different outcome. I think everybody's in agreement that 3-0 that was a rather flattering scoreline for Burnley, and I'm sure that Burnley people would agree with that as well. And Simon Francis came out after the game. He said he thinks VAR is taking the emotion out of football. Would you tend to agree with him with that? Yeah, I mean, there's no question um, it's taken the emotion out of the game. You know, players now are hesitant before they celebrate. Supporters, you know, briefly celebrate and then turn around and look at the big screens to find out whether there's going to be a VAR check and, and stuff like that. You know, I think that when you look at rugby and you look at cricket, you know, they certainly seem to have um, got it right in those two sports. I think um, football is still coming to terms with trying to get it right. I think VAR, in essence, you know, is probably... Um, not saying a good idea, but I'm sure it could work. Um, but unfortunately, there's human error coming into it. And I think, you know, that's that's the key area that they need to try and eradicate. And it was supposed to eradicate that and it hasn't as yet. And I just want to talk about that Harry Wilson goal. It was a fine team, team move on the break. And then obviously, Mike Deeney goes up the other end. He awards Burnley a penalty. Have you ever seen anything like it? No. And I think what's curious about the whole situation is you've got a match referee on the pitch and the whole decision was taken completely out of his hands. He clearly didn't, he didn't see the um, alleged handball from Adam Smith. And if he did, he didn't think it was a handball. Obviously, lets the game go on. Somebody tells him down his you know, earplug, hang on a minute, we need to review this, etc., etc. And so it goes on. So you've almost completely taken the decision away from the match referee. So, you know, somebody said to me, you could have a mannequin refereeing games these days if you're going to do it like that. It's been debated. Everybody's had their say, you know, Saturday night, Sunday, it's dragged into Monday. It's probably going to go on forever and ever. So, um, you know, let's just sort of nip it in the bud, if you like. I think, you know, everybody from a Bournemouth perspective thinks that both decisions should have gone the other way. They were both wrong. Um, but, you know, it's important that we not brush it under the carpet certainly but you know put it to the back of our minds because there's you know there's a, a really important game coming up against Chelsea on Saturday. Certainly well ahead of that game against Burnley our under 21s had a superb win here against Southampton let's take a look at all the goals. Well, it's given away there by Kilkenny and Ferry's in Will Ferry beats corner and it's in it's Hanson to tap in a goal of the cherry zone doing, you have to say. It was an intercepted pass. Will Ferry got down that left-hand side. And he un unselfishly, I should say, squared it to Hanson. It's, it's a good tackle there by Kyle Taylor. Good feet from him. Taylor, it's John Tamora! Brilliant finish from a brilliant Kyle Taylor pass. And AFC Bournemouth have pulled level here. So AFC Bournemouth 1, Southampton 1. Great finish and a great pass from Kyle Taylor, Neil. Kyle Taylor does just enough. Maddox's cross. And it's there. Is it over the line? The linesman's flagging on the far side. It is a goal. And Southampton have the lead again. It's a fullback and Pumo who has scored. The Cherries just couldn't quite clear the second phase from that corner. Just over five minutes left here at Vitality Stadium. And again, Phil, even though Southampton had the ball, you can't get frustrated, you can't go diving in. Stick to the game plan. No. Surridge. Sam Surridge. It's Jordan Ibe! There's your equaliser. It's a really good finish from Jordan Ibe. 
What a game we've got on our hands here. We said it was like the Stoke City game in the Premier League Cup. It's a carbon copy. AFC Bournemouth 2, Southampton 2. The fans are getting really behind the team here at Vitality Stadium. It's Ibsen Rossi. And it will break for Surridge here. Good chance for a counter-attack here. Surridge. Ibe. Ibe. Surridge. Surridge strikes it low! It's there! It's Sam Surridge! What a finish from the England under 21 international! And the Cherries have turned this game around. They were 1 0 down. They were 2 1 down. And now they're 3 2 up in injury time. Well, an excellent win for our under 21s here on Friday night. Neil, let's talk about that game. 3,700 people here at Vitality Stadium under the lights. It was a superb occasion, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I've been fortunate enough to watch all of the Premier League Cup games this season. They've all been really, really exciting, but that one you know, was probably the best just because of the finish really and you know, the fact that we came from behind on two occasions. Southampton certainly played their part, um, you know, um, came here, like you said, a fantastic crowd. Um, obviously, it's the biggest crowd for a Premier League Cup game we've had, but you know, when you go back through the years, there have been some really, really big attendances in reserve games for a head of big FA Cup games when people came along for tickets, so it, it wasn't a record by any means. But it certainly shows, you know, the club's going in the right direction with regarding um, Premier League Cup games and FA Youth Cup games. We saw fantastic crowds for all of those and the and women's games as well. So um, yeah, what a, what a what it was a great occasion, I think, uh, particularly. And they showed great courage, didn't they? You know, they were one nil down, they were two one down, and and they really fought back. And and it shows so much character from Sean Cooper's side. Well, I think Sean Cooper hit the nail on the head. He said, you know, they're they're a team of winners. You know, they got that 85th minute equaliser um, and they know that they've qualified for the next stage. But no, they weren't content with that. They went on and they just kept going. They kept banging on the door. And eventually Sam Surridge came up with a fantastic winner to cap, um, you know, a, a really memorable night. Well, we talk about Sam Surridge. It's, it's great to see him, you know, finding the score sheet. He's not played perhaps as much as he would have liked with the first team since coming back from Swansea. But for him, getting some minutes, scoring at the stadium, it can only do him the world of good. Yeah, I mean, you know, him him and a number of other players as well. You know, we saw Kyle Taylor stood out that night. Tyler Cordner stood out that night. You know, it wasn't the best first half. I think Sean Cooper said it was, you know, probably their least impressive first half performance this season. And I think we could all see that. They, you know, they were conceding possession too, obvious, too, too, too easily, giving away too many chances. But, um, you know, there was a, a tactical switch uh, which paid dividends. Um, and, you know, Sam Surry certainly played his part. He looks so much stronger now with, you know, that loan spell at um, Swansea in the championship. Um, certainly um, beefed him up and um, educated him to the, you know, un big defenders, how to, how to sort of um, get the better of defenders. And you could certainly see that in his game on Friday. And as you said, you know, they're through to the next round with the game to go. They've topped the group as well. And that's quite an achievement, you know, being in a, in a group with Category 1 and Category 2 teams. Yeah, I think in the last two seasons, we've gone into the last 16 um, having come second in the group. So which means that we have to play away in the last 16 this time. We're going to be playing at home. It's going to be here at Vitality Stadium. It will be sometime in March. We're not quite sure when and we're not quite sure who yet. It's all to play for in the group below us. I think it's either Liverpool or Wigan or Sunderland. One of those teams will come here next month for the last 16. All to play for. It's worth mentioning we'll have ticket information as soon as we, we know our opposition and date for that one. Let's just talk about the under-21s, their season as a whole. You know, they're through in the Premier League Cup, they're in the Hampshire Senior Cup semi-finals, which is obviously men's football, and they're through in the Central League Cup as well to the knockout stages. They're having quite a campaign, aren't they? Yeah, I, um, I bumped into to Mark Molesley this week and he said how, you know, we're going for the treble. <laughs> Um, you know, and why not? You know, like like Sean Cooper said, they're a team of winners. They're, they're doing superbly on every front. Unfortunately, the uh, um, Hampshire Senior Cup semi-final was called off against Moneyfields this week, so that's been rearranged. I think it's for the 10th of March. So, it's been great to get into the final of that. The Central League Cup, obviously, with the holders of that, it'd be great to retain that and go as far as we can in the Premier League Cup. You know, it's um, you know, it's a really competitive competition. You've got all the Category One and Category Two under 23 teams in it. 
um, has, has a Category 3 club. We're fielding an under-21 team in it as well, so we're giving away some years in, in some respects. So, um, yeah, you know, they, they're unbeaten this season, all to play for on three fronts. Absolutely. Well, next up, our attention turns to the game here tomorrow against Chelsea. Let's take a look at what Eddie Howe had to say in his pre-match press conference. Meps is a bit behind the others, I think, in terms of time. He's got still some way to go. But the others are improving quite quickly. Um, we hope to get them involved um, back in training, if not next week, then maybe the week after. So we'll see. It was quite difficult because you, when you're seeing one thing and you think, I'm not, I can't see how that's gone against us. I think it, it, you have to seek answers. Um, not that you're going to change the decisions. You're not looking to do that. Um, but just so you have a better understanding of, of the process involved. And yeah, it's massive to be back. Um, we thoroughly enjoyed the last two home games where the crowd were exceptional for us. They really were. They helped us against Brighton when we were had an, an uncomfortable start to that game. They helped us against Aston Villa all through the game, especially when we had 10 men. Uh, we've performed to a, a, a good level against Chelsea um, in the games that you mentioned. But it counts for nothing in this match. This is a totally different game. I always try and say that to my players. Let's use the confidence from, from history if, if you need to do that. But... We fully respect Chelsea, Frank Lampard, his squad. We know how tough this is going to be. Well, that was Eddie Howe speaking in the press conference this morning. Neil, we've had some superb results against Chelsea over the years. We had that 3-0 at Stamford Bridge, a 4-0 here in January last year. And let's not forget that one in December. Like you say, I mean, uh, when you look at our record against the so-called top six, top four, whatever you want to call them, uh, our record against Chelsea outweighs any against any of the, any other the other cl the other clubs, three wins at Stamford Bridge we've had in the Premier League, and like you say, the four 0 win here last season, uh, on a night when we really needed to get a good a, a good result, and we did. Went to Stamford Bridge again in December, needed a result, and really got one. There's this thing this I've always said about this club. It's got there's a habit of pulling out a result when you sometimes when you least expect it when they really need it, and they've they've done that down the years so many times. You know, you can go right back to Grimsby, that famous day, 10 years, 11 years ago, when, the, you know, the greatest escape was pulled off. Always seem to pull a result out of the hat when they need it. And we could do with another one tomorrow. Well, there's no better place than here to do it. And it'll be so great to be back at Vitality Stadium in front of the fans. It's It's been almost a month now that Aston Villa game was on the 1st of February. So it'll be great for the lads. They can take confidence from their results against Chelsea and, and take confidence from being back at home as well. Yeah, and um, looking for a third home win on the trot after the you know the Brighton win and the Aston Villa win, like you said, you know what what a memorable day that Aston Villa game was. You know you could see what it meant to everybody at the end of the game. The massive huddle, Steve Fletcher went in there and and gave a talk to the players, an impromptu talk, I think. Um, you know, it was the real the real spirit and camaraderie that you associate with the club. You could see it all came out on that day. Um, you know, and we're going to need that in our home games, you know, the last last few home games of this season because of where we are in the league, obviously. Um, but really looking forward to, to Chelsea. And Frank Lampard, he's obviously come in at, at the start of the season. What have you made of his time at Chelsea so far as a manager, of course? Yeah, um, well, he's obviously had a really difficult time transfer-wise because they had that ban in place where they couldn't sign any players. So he turned to the younger players um, and did did really well. But, you know, one of the things with playing younger players is they're going to be unpredictable, they're going to be inconsistent, and, you know, their results have shown that. Um, but he's certainly putting his stamp on it. You know, he's followed a lot of continental managers who've been in there down the years. Um I was reading uh, an interview that's going in the programme uh, for the Chelsea game with Harry Wilson about, you know, how much of a, an effect he's had on his career and how influential he was last season when Harry Wilson was on loan at Derby County, uh, you know, and he got them obviously into the playoffs as well. So um, really, really bright future for, for Frank Lampard. And obviously Chelsea, they had that midweek game, that 3-0 defeat to Bayern Munich. They'll be looking to you know, get back on the winning front after a superb win against Spurs last time out in the Premier League. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it goes back to that sort of uh, the inconsistency. You know, I mean, um, Bayern Munich are, you know, obviously one of the best teams in Europe. So, um, you know, there's, there's, it's never going to be easy playing them in the, uh, in the Champions League. But, you know, we went to Stamford Bridge after. They think they played Roma in the Champions League last um, in in December and we, we we managed to nick a 1-0 win there um, so hopefully we can do the same tomorrow. In terms of their team news doesn't look like N'Golo Kante is going to be fit for the game on the weekend that's a, a big boost for us but nonetheless they've got some superb players elsewhere don't they? Yeah I mean you know 
irrespective of the, the the transfer ban and who they haven't have and haven't been able to bring in. You know, they've got a, a star studded a star studded team there. Um, you talk about Angolo Kante. We're obviously you know sweating on the fitness of uh, Jefferson Lerma after missing out last week. So those two, um, you know, in midfield would have had a rare old battle, I'm sure, about it. So let, let's wait and see whether whether Jeff's fit and if selected. Um, but yeah, they got dangerous players all over the pitch, no question about that. And just finally, in terms of our team news, you mentioned Jefferson Lerma missing out last week. Another big blow was Nathan Ake not playing a part in the game. It was concussion last week, so any chance of him recovering would be, a, again, a huge boost for us. Well, yeah, and, and against his old club as well. I'm sure he's absolutely desperate to play. Um, I think the manager said that um, it was only a sort of five-day concussion thing, so... Um, hopefully all being well if Nathan's come through training this week I would imagine that um, you know he'll certainly be back back in contention and uh, what a welcome return he would be. Absolutely well it's going to be a very exciting game here indeed if you are coming to the game then we hope you enjoy yourself but if not make sure you listen to Chris Temple and John Williams on BBC Radio Solent and AFCB TV for all the updates. Bye for now.